You want to be a data scientist because you've heard about all the pros. The ability to transition from any background, to work remotely, insanely high starting salaries, and due to the ever-increasing demand for data scientists, a relatively straightforward path to your first job. Some of this may be true, but as much as I love data science, I would be doing you a disservice if I acted like it was this perfect job that had no problems associated with it. By the end of this video, you'll know the four worst parts of being a data scientist and have a clearer idea of whether this is the right path for you. In essence, you'll know four principles you must accept to become a data scientist. Principle one. The industry changes all the time, so you have to keep learning. Data science is not one of those careers where you just learn it once and you're like, yes, I know data science. The reality is at every stage of your career, there'll be new things you have to learn and the systems that you do work on can change right under your feet. For example, some time ago I was working on this really nice predictive model with a really nice data pipeline, feature engineered and all of that. And I had spent a lot of time working on this thing, trying to perfect it as much as I could. And then I came back to it like two weeks later and the initial library that I had began to build everything on top of was no longer supported. And that meant that in the moment I had to discard that library, go away and rejig all of my code and learn a new library that could now work with this adjusted code just to keep this thing running. And to be honest, that's just a low tier problem because depending on the experience of the data scientists around you, there may be times where certain problems can only be addressed by learning a whole new coding language. And if the data scientists around you don't know that, it may fall on you to pick that up on the fly or to brush up on a specific element of maths just for this one very specific problem. On a grander scale, disruptive technologies like AI can also affect the field and have led to an increased expectation for the output that you do produce. And as data people, it falls on us a lot of the time to be able to implement these LLMs in real life. In essence, you have to become autodidactic, to be disciplined enough to pick up these new skills as they crop up. And the reality is, a lot of the time, between the hours of 9 to 5, you already have pre-assigned projects that you're expected to be working on. So it might fall on you to pick up these skills outside of work. I mean, <laughs> your employer may not explicitly say it, but there is an expectation of you to keep up with these trends. So at least occasionally you will find yourself coding after hours. Principle 2. Coding and maths aren't enough. They are simply the minimum requirements. Think about it, if I fill this room full of data scientists, every single one of them would be able to code, have a decent level of mathematics. And unless you're truly elite at either one, it's hard to make that your unique selling point. So in many ways, you're always looking for new ways to set yourself apart from the herd, Becoming an expert in a niche, for example, or something that I have found some joy in, improving my soft skills as much as I can. And working on the ability to articulate potentially complex problems in as simple a manner as possible so that anybody can understand them. And whether you go self-taught or through the university system, the problem is that all the emphasis is on maths and coding. And don't get me wrong, those two are undoubtedly the most important things, but there is so much more. And that's a big reason why I'm starting this newsletter to help people with this as they're just getting into the field. One to two times a month in this newsletter, I will be giving you a short write-up of my biggest learnings from working on the job as a data scientist, as well as from my days as a data science student. So that you know the really in the weeds actionable stuff that will make you better on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'll even be providing templates from actionable videos of mine, all for free of course. And this will help you to hopefully take action on what I say rather than just watch the video and be like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool and move on. I am only making it one to two times a month, A, to avoid spam, and B, to make sure that I'm not just putting it out just because there's some artificial deadline so that I can actually take the whole month to learn stuff, pick out the most important things and then give them to you. So if you're interested in that, it's absolutely free. Sign up through the description below. Principle three, you will feel like a failure. Embrace it. Data science is a field that is almost explicitly designed to make you feel like a failure at certain points. And this stems from the fact that there is such a wide breadth of knowledge that you at least have to know something about before going extremely deep and becoming an expert in one area. So for example, if you are transitioning from a non-technical background like I was, things like coding can be extremely challenging just because it requires a whole different type of thinking. I mean, I've shared on this channel before how I had never failed a single exam in my life until I took my very first coding <laughs> exam in university, and that was quite frankly disastrous. So you combine having to learn all these new topics with 
every new article or YouTube video telling you that you can go from zero to a data science master in like 10 days or whatever ridiculous timeline there is. And you begin to wonder what is wrong with me? Why can't I do these things in such a short timeline? Am I a failure? But once you begin to anticipate that you will fail at certain points and you begin to anticipate these roadblocks, you stop thinking about that and now you look at these failures as an opportunity to learn something new because you realize that there will come a point where you're able to do this fairly easily. So you have to learn to approach learning new topics as an opportunity of growth rather than an area of potential failure. It reminds me of this Winston Churchill quote I recently came across. Success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Principle four, getting a job is not easy. You have to earn it. Everywhere you look, the news sources will tell you that there is a shortage of data science workers. That basically there are more jobs available than there are employees capable of filling those slots. This leads to a misconception amongst prospective data scientists that you'll basically be able to walk into a job. Like these people will take anybody. And honestly, that's just not true, especially at the entry level because it can get pretty competitive as it is a field that draws a lot of smart people. But here we see one junior data scientist, ICF London, 295 applicants two days ago. And this is from a recruiting company, 20K a year, not much at all, but still people are looking to get their foot in the door. So four days ago, 610 applicants. Another recruitment company, junior data scientist. Okay, there we go, now we're talking, now we're talking. <laughs> but anyway, two days ago, 388 applicants. Regular data scientist, doesn't say junior or senior. Oh, to be fair, that's a month ago. And here we have one two weeks ago, 272 applicants. Not too bad. Ooh, and some Bristol too. Interesting. With so many applicants vying for the same roles, you have to earn your way to it to find a way to stand out. Primarily, this is by creating a really nice portfolio that does appeal to employers. But there are definitely other ways of doing this. For example, competing in Kaggle competitions to tangibly show your expertise or an underrated one, being able to network on LinkedIn and online resources, as well as in person. And I know the applicants to job ratios that I have just shown you may scare you off, but to be honest, new data science jobs come on the market much more often than any other industry that my friends work in. So there is definitely the opportunity to get a job. It's not unrealistic at all, especially if you're willing to do what it takes. Armed with these four principles, you now have a peek into the more challenging aspects that await you. If you can take these on and decide that this is still the right path for you, welcome aboard. I'm Data Nash, just a guy documenting his journey from being a data science newbie to one day being elite. Sharing my successes, systems, failures, and all of that along the way so that you can get to where I am now and far beyond that much quicker than I have, hopefully. So if that sounds good, hit like, hit subscribe. And if you need a roadmap to help you get into data science, I have a free one through that newsletter below, but you can also watch this video where I explain everything that I did in my data science degree.